Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Alex Bein. I'm with the uh, um, Intelligent Infrastructure Cluster here at Citrus uh, with the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department and the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. Um, today, uh, we are very pleased to have Professor Michael Zida uh, visiting us at, at Berkeley. Uh, before we go into the seminar, I want to make a couple announcements. So first, I want to welcome our web viewers. If you're watching from uh, the other Citrus campuses, you can IM us your questions. They will be read to the speaker uh, at the end of the talk. Uh, two announcements. The I4 Energy Seminar uh, will continue this Friday with a talk by Igor Mezic, and he will talk on uh, measurements uh, for um, energy efficiency in buildings. Um, other announcements, uh, particularly for the students, uh, there's a big IDEA students uh, competition with uh, $45,000 to win. If you're interested, uh, please pick up the flyers at the back of the room here. Okay, so today it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Michael Zida from the, uh, School of the Vidobi School of Engineering at USC. Uh, Michael is uh, the founding director of the USC Gamepipe Laboratory at USC, where he's a professor of engineering practice uh, in the USC Department of uh, Computer Science. Um, prior to that, um, uh, Michael had a lot of experience uh, in gaming in another context for the military. In fact, he worked at the Naval uh, Postgraduate School in Monterey, uh, California. Uh, where he was also the founding director of the Moves Institute, uh, which, uh, which is hosted at the NPS uh, in Monterey. Um, at USC, Michael has created several programs, uh, in particular the uh, Bachelor in Computer Science in Games uh, in, uh, within the Computer Science Department, um, as well, uh, which is a cross-disciplinary program, um, as well as a master's program. And I think what's really cool about these programs is that since Michael has joined, I think the enrollment um, um, of the department has doubled, and I think that's uh, partly the uh, achievements that uh, he has um, uh, created since he's been there. A couple other facts. Uh, Michael is the mayor of all the gates of Terminal A, uh, United, um, at uh, the Los Angeles airport yes. on uh, Four Square. Um, and uh, I think last time we shared a cab together uh, on the way from the NRC to Dulles Airport, you were about to become the mayor of the CIA at Langley. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if that happened, but hopefully uh, we'll find a way to plug in this information in your talk. So welcome. To oh, thank you. All right. Well, thank you for the invite. Uh, I, I think the last time I was at Berkeley is about 1998. It's been a long time. Uh, give you a little background. I, I spent uh, 21 years at a school in Monterey, California, a Naval Postgraduate School. And I got to uh, do a lot of work in real-time interactive 3D graphics. Um, I got to help found an ACM conference, uh, an a the ACM Symposium on Interactive 3D Graphics, if any of you have ever done that. I think the first time I ran it, Carlo uh, Sican was the program co-program chair with Rich Riesenfeld. So uh, some nice old friends here in the audience. I uh, Last four years, four and a half years at the Naval Postgraduate School, I got to found a couple of things. I got to found the, the Moves Institute, the Modeling Virtual Environments and Simulation Institute. And at the same time, I got to build a game called America's Army. America's Army, uh, it, I actually got to build and operate a hit game from inside of NPS. Uh, so uh, I took one of my PhD students. I made him uh, my executive producer for America's Army 1.0. And uh, when we shipped the 1.0 version in 2002, my student gave two weeks' notice, and he went and took a, another job. He went to become president of Epic Games. His name is Mike Caps. And the next thing he produced was Gears of War 1, 2, and 3. I think there's, reg there's about 15 million players of those three games together. Um, my next executive producer for America's Army 2.0 was one of my guys there, uh, Alex Mayberry. And uh, we shipped the 2.0 version. Alex then went and took a job elsewhere at Blizzard Entertainment and became senior producer for World of Warcraft. And I looked at that and said, you know, the heck with this. So on, on my uh, 50th birthday, I quit uh, the Naval Postgraduate School. I just resigned and uh, called up the Dean of Engineering at USC. And I said, I, I want to come down and found the games program. Why don't you put me in a temp position uh, in engineering somewhere? I'll, I'll make this happen. And that's kind of where I ended up. I've been at USC almost seven years, and uh, I still, interestingly, live in Carmel <laughs> by the sea uh, on the weekends, and I live in Venice Beach during the week. So a little, little fact there. I'm one of these few. I have two homes. I've got three offices, and uh, I'm an advisor to, I think, seven startup companies in Silicon Valley. So if you are on Foursquare, you see me uh, moving around a little bit. So today's talk is how do you create... Uh, number one games cross-disciplinary degree program and 
build a, a lab with students building interesting and unique games. So a couple things, what have I done there? I've, I've got a bachelor in computer science specializing in games and a master's in computer science specializing in games. I'm going to show you what these degrees look like and some of the thinking behind them because I, I think there it, it, there's some interest interesting things in, in the way I think that are probably different than most computer scientists. Um, we actually got the degrees approved in uh, summer of 2006. And in summer 2006, we got to fall. None of the computer science undergraduates uh, coming into the program were actually in the, the, the games degree. And in fact, in fall of 2006, the computer science department only had 25 freshmen come in in computer science. And 18 of them switched to the games major in the first week in the program. And the general CS program has continued to uh, uh, remain similarly sized. Uh, we are now somewhere on the order, I think, undergraduates. We have about 140 undergraduates in the games program and about 100 master's students in the master's in computer science specializing in games. So when we got to March of this year, uh, we got this announcement from Princeton Review, which was USC named top school for video game design for the second straight year. And if you read this article from The Hollywood Reporter, that uh, you know, archival journal of computer science, uh, <laughs> this actually mentions that this is a program joint with the School of Cinema Interactive Media program. And that's the, one, that's the other thing I've been able to achieve. When I got to USC, the USC had a School of uh, MFA in Interactive Media degree, and those students, three years, 56 units, could get to the end of their degree, and they could do a, a nice PowerPoint presentation on the game they could build if they ever had programmers, or they could do a flash game. And so I actually went to USC to say, well, look, I'm going to build, make you the game development part that you don't have, and I've sort of spent the last seven years smashing our programs together. So let's turn out and look at what I did with the computer science department. And uh, be, first of all, I got there, and a uh, couple, couple points of fact, the general computer science undergraduate degree, even to this day, the last year of the undergraduates, uh, they have a two-semester-long compiler project. That's what they do. And so I got there, and I said, I'm not going to do that. We're going to build games over a year, and I'm going to tell you about that as we go. But I had to take the, the, the undergraduate degree. There's, in the games major, there are 37 units of computer science and I had to take the first four programming classes and switch them back from Java to C++. That was like one of the first things. Actually, when I started designing this degree, I went to all of the game companies, and I went to Electronic Arts, uh, and I think I had an advisory board of 65 game industry members to plan the degree, and they actually said the following. They said, look, uh, we don't currently recruit from USC computer science whatsoever because their first programming language is Java. And they said, if we actually find on their resume the first programming language they learned was Java, even if they know C++, we, stop, we don't interview them. So I had to, and I'll just tell you this right out. This is what I was told when I, when I went going to build this program. If you're a computer scientist, as old as I am, what you learn is you learn all kinds of languages. They're really easy. I, I was a TA for a class in which the, each assignment was turned in in a different programming language. And that kind of drove the students crazy, but it can be done if you're sufficiently uh, sleep deprived. Um, so I, I switched them all, I switched, switched three of the four back to C++. I think one of them we left at um, Java just because they need to know that too. I, um, if you look at the general CS degree at USC, the students there, they take four classes in circuit design, which is if you're a really old computer scientist, you probably did take circuit design. And maybe you still do here at Berkeley. I, I'm hoping I'm not upsetting anyone. Um, I threw them out, and I replaced them with a uh, modern uh, computer organization architecture class, which I designed. And you know, I used the Patterson book, the Henderson Patterson book. Uh, and I also put in a game hardware architectures class, which is at USC. You'll you'll see it's listed as CSCI WE452. Basically, it's a parallel programming. Uh, multi-core programming, GPU programming class so that our students know how to build uh, multi-core pieces of software. I also put in networks. Uh, undergrads at USC do not have to take a networking class. I cannot imagine that you could get a degree in computer science without a networking class. I had to pull one out of the EE department 
And so it's, it's in there. And in fact, I want to revise that class uh, over time. So I, I did some modifications of the program. So that's kind of where I started. Uh, game development, there are 42 units of game development. Uh, they've got a video game programming class they take, uh, which it, they take a game hardware architectures class. Uh, they take a programming game engines class. And when I stood this program up, I actually wrote this, the syllabi, I wrote 16 brand new computer science syllabi and two double E syllabi and uh, modified four existing classes. So I basically changed or added 20 new classes to the CS department in a very short amount of time. Uh, basically, it took me about three months to write all the syllabi. And then it really took, I think, six months to get them approved through all of the departments involved. I had to have the computer science department vote yes. And, and I'll give you a tactic, by the way. The packet was about that fat when you printed it. And so if you send a big fat packet of that to the computer science faculty, and you go into the faculty meeting, and you're going to have a vote on it, they look at that and they go, oh, I don't have time to read that. And they vote yes or no. We got a unanimous yes. And which is, you know, by the way, if you are going to become faculty and you want to build something new and innovative, make it really big. And, and, and they won't read it. But anyway, they approved it. I actually thought they would come back and say, you know, you know you're asking us to, to create, you know, six, you know, 18 new classes. What are, you, what are you doing? And they would come back and, and push back budgetarily. But they actually were, actually, they approved it. And then the dean gave me the budget to go hire people. To, to, to go build the program. Um, some of the people that we, I ended up hiring, I had to go off and get industry people to help teach. So this Game Harder Architectures class is actually taught by the director for technology for Disney Interactive. It's actually written into his contract that he's allowed to teach at USC on Monday at 7 to 10. And he's allowed to leave work at 5 p.m. He wouldn't take the job otherwise, which I, I thought was really interesting. Um, the... Uh, Programming Game Engines class was taught by one of the lead programmers at Naughty Dog. And the uh, video game programming class is also taught by another programmer from Naughty Dog. Um, game Design, School of Cinema Interactive Media Program has three classes in game design. They've got a game design workshop, intermediate game development, and intermediate game design workshop. And I, what I wanted to do is take computer scientists and put them in the design program. What I wanted them to do is be in the same classes as the designers. First of all, computer scientists think differently than designers for the most part. And uh, what, what you learn in the very first day of class is the computer scientists will come in with laptops and they'll sit in the middle of the room on the tables. And the design, the, the design students actually will sit near the back of the room and not near the engineers. And it's very interesting when you see this. And then gradually by the end of that class, you know, actually, the first three weeks of that class, they do paper game design, which is you have a good game idea, but we want you to prototype it with paper and pencil and scissors and cardboard and glue so that you can see it is gameplay fun. And the engineers in the first three weeks come by my office and go, I hate that class, I hate that class. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, 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 and they, the ones who come to the end of that class and say they hated it all the way through you know, I realize that their, their career is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them a job at Microsoft or Cisco or and something not in the game industry. Uh, the ones that come to the end of the class, the engineers come to the end of the class and they come back and they go, that was the best class I ever took. I'm like, yeah, that's why we sent you there. Anyway, it's, it's a very interesting experience to see the engineers go from just engineering focus to having this broadening of, of, of minds and, and the way they think. I took away, the way I created this degree is I took away all their electives except for six units. We also have a game cross-disciplinary uh, set of courses. I, I put together a set of courses that I wanted anybody at USC to be able to, who wants to dip into the game store, going to be able to take. So we've got the CS180 Survey of Digital Games and Their Technologies. This is an interesting class. All the undergraduate freshmen have to take this class in their first semester of their first year. So think about it. They're 18 years old. They've been playing games for 10 or 12 years. They do not know the history of games. They do not know the history of gameplay. So we have them go through and play old games, play old emulators of games. If we've got the, if we've got the console, we'll have them play the old console game. And they come out of that class and they go, oh, that was the best class ever. And of course, and, and then they love our program from that point forward. It's 
part psychological, but it's also important to get them grounded. Um, this is taught by one of the lead artists from Heavy Iron Studios in uh, Los Angeles. It's a great class. Video game production. We teach them about production in a funny way. We have a guy from, uh, it's the CEO for Grab Games. Uh, he used to be a uh, vice president of production for Konami. He teaches this class, and what we do is we make a class where the students do individual projects. And the idea is to show them what one person can do if they build a game by themselves. Okay? It's trying to answer a question. I, I, when I first started this program, and I, I would have a lot of kids go, I don't want to work in a team, I want to build a game by myself. And I knew they had no future in the game industry. Because the, in the game industry, game building is a team sport. All right. So we put them in this class, and they get a lot of lectures from game industry people, and they have to build a game over the semester by themselves. And they don't get very far, and they realize, OK, I really do need to work in a team. We put them in a Pipelines for Games Interactives class. Uh, that's taught by Scott Easley. Scott Easley used to be the lead Pipelines lead animator for THQ Heavy Iron Studios. He did the game Ratatouille, uh, The Incredibles, uh, Oddworld Entertainment games, if you know those games. And he came to me and goes, I want to quit and want to come work for you full time and teach in your program full time. So what he did is he helped us design a pipeline system for our students to manage their assets and their source code. And he also teaches them how to build 3D and animate 3D models in Maya uh, as well. And so our students, we, we design all of our systems. So if you're in that class, you go to a Google spreadsheet and, and it says, Somebody needs an animated penguin, and you're tasked in the class to build an animated penguin. Now, the people filling in that spreadsheet are in a different class. So you may be building models for people in a different class, and that, that they'll get tasked in there. And by the end of it, what happens is all the students in our program know how to build assets and manage their whole game production in our online asset management system, which is very key, which means when they go into their next classes or any class that builds a game in our program, it's all the same tools, all right? So that they don't have to relearn and, and change around. They also take an animation for games class. We also take, have them take introduction to computer animation taught by the School of Cinema Animation program. They all take a serious games class and then they spend their last year in a class called Final Game Projects. It's 491A and B. And let me tell you a little bit about that class. That class is a 12 month long class, all right? We started in spring. And it goes for 12 months, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you some slides to give you the details. They all, um, this is how game building works at USC. Most of the game building in big teams happens in my lab, in the Game Pipe Lab. And what you'll see is you'll see in the Viterbi School of Engineering, in computer science, they've got a bachelor's in CS and a master's in CS specializing in games. And their last year is building games in the Game Pipe Lab. And then the students who are in cinematic arts, who are in the interactive media program, there's a bachelor's in interactive entertainment and an MFA in interactive media, those students have to spend a year in the 491 class joining with the engineers. Now, the dash lines here means, I hope those come online at some point in time. We get onesies and twosies of people. USC has a fine arts program. It has a game art and design minor that uh, they designed, which meets right with my program, but, um, Students who are in the undergraduate and fine arts program are prohibited from taking a minor in game art and design, which is kind of funny. So we don't actually get anyone from this, which is totally silly. Um, so what we did is we linked up with Atlantic College and Laguna College of Art and Design. So I want to tell you the size of this effort. Um, right now, engineering-wise, there are 62 students in, in this class from engineering. There are 22 students from interactive media. And we get 40 artists from Laguna College of Art and Design and 20 from Atlanta College that are building uh, 3D models and animations and concept art for the games our students are building in this 12 month long class. So this class has three instructors. Um, I'm one of them. You know, I get to get America's Army to 3.5 million registered players. I directed and operated the game. I founded the joint games program at USC and the engineering side of the games program. My students have actually shipped games played by over 360 million players. I've actually been keeping track. And I'll show you what this looks like. I've got a slide on this a little later on. Um, Scott Easley, associate director of two Emmys and an Annie Award game animation, Pixar games, Oddworld, Laird Malamud, 
is an instructor from interactive media. So we have engineering, animation, pipelines, uh, production and design. So Laird, if you look at him, he teaches part-time in our program one day a week. What's his day job? His day job is C Senior Vice President of Production for Activision. All right, underneath him is Modern Warfare 3 and Skyliners, which is just coming out, which is the toy base game. All right, so I'm teaching with a guy who has 46 game credits. All right, so our, pro our students are actually learning from industry people a lot. So let's talk about the 491 class. Join games, we do a contest in spring. We basically say anybody who's taken the game design workshop classes can submit a game design. And we got 16 submissions this last year. We have an industry panel that reads and decides which uh, to hear verbally. Uh, we had nine of them present. We ended up choosing seven for builds starting in fall semester. We do this in spring, so by April 1st, we know which games are going to be built. We tell the students, you got to have your design finished by summer. When you come in on the first day of class in August, you have to have your design, you got to present it to us. You have to have your team stand up and say, here's our team. And you have to tell us, who are you missing? What skills are you missing? And we help you go get those skills. And so uh, this is amazingly professional. We also tell them, please um, think about what your intellectual property split is before you start building the game. Uh, USC policy is we let the students own the game IP they build in classes. All right, so they're going to spend 12 months on this. They're going to give us our, their best, absolutely best ideas. So here are the seven games that we're building this year. I'm not going to tell you much about them other than to show you there's a set of people there. Um, each of these teams has a lead designer and it has a, a producer and the producer has to do a grading every single week of all of the members of all of their team. Basically, it's a spreadsheet on a Google spreadsheet, which this is the name of the person, what was the task they were supposed to do this week, and is it green, yellow, or red? Did they get it done? Uh, and and, and you, most of the time, it's all green. Every once in a while, we'll get someone who's yellow or a red, and we go and grab that person and shake them until it turns into a green. And uh, each of these teams has to have industry mentors, which means they have to have a... Um, Someone from industry who is a designer in industry or a producer in industry or a lead engineer or all three who is going to mentor them about building their game. So, for example, this team, Benjamin uh, Salisbury and the Clockwork Zombies, has a guy named Sumit Jakadar who is one of my former students uh, who went to Activision uh, and who was the, one of the lead designers on Call of Duty World at War. And he was also one of the lead designers in Call of Duty Black Ops. So these, this group of students has one of the members of the, the guy basically who, wrote all, who designed all the single player missions and programmed all the AI is their engineering mentor for their game. Okay, one of the other teams has another, one of my other students, a guy named Bat. And Bat, he is uh, one of the leads on Modern Warfare 3. So we have a number of folks at that level helping out as mentors through all of these games. And the industry people come and will meet with the students every week or they'll, the students will go to their office every week in Los Angeles and, and meet with them. So the fall semester of this class is every Thursday, 3.30 to 7 p.m. Students have to show weekly progress. And the goal in the class is to have a playable prototype by the end of the semester uh, from 20 minutes to 60 minutes of gameplay. And we do an end of semester demo day. The end of semester demo day Right now, we hold in USC's Bovard Auditorium. There are only a thousand seats in the auditorium, right? So we actually invite all of the students, and I invite about 500 game industry people to come and look. And it's all of the game hiring people, and it's all of the major designers and uh, collaborators from industry and our former students. What happens is, if our former students are in the game industry, they seem to find their way back. It's a demo day and look for more people to hire. Spring semester, we look back at what was accomplished in fall semester. We do mid-course corrections, continue development, and we expect to have two to four hours of gameplay by the end of the semester. You do a uh, spring end of semester demo day there, and uh, that's a big event. It's basically the week before graduation, and uh, we, that, it's quite cool. So here's some pictures from demo day standing on stage in spring showing a couple of games. You know, we'll have a camera so you can see, your, you know, put your iPad game up. 
Well, um, our dean will get interviewed, and we'll have a giant food line because uh, we usually you know, get about fifteen thousand dollars of donated food from industry uh, to support the event. Um, connect, this is a Connect game being demonstrated on stage. We started teaching a class on how to build Connect games before the Connect came out, supported by Microsoft Game Studios. Microsoft ga brought us pre-production hardware, SDKs, and they flew down designers every three weeks to work with our students for the first semester we taught this class. And so that's, uh, we, get, we get amazingly interesting things happening in the class. Another Connect game as well. Um, this is an iPad game called Fruits vs. Veggies, which is out there on the iTunes store now. It's doing actually pretty well. Uh, demo day attendance, who comes? All kinds of folks come. Basically, anybody who has hired from us in the past comes back to demo day, and they fly in from out of town. So actually, the, I started getting requests on the first week of class, when is the date and time for demo day? Because they're buying airline tickets to, to, to fly down. And companies like Disney will say, we, right now we want to bring 10 people, can we bring 20 people? So now we're in this giant auditorium, we say yes. But we get uh, Electronic Arts, Microsoft Game Studios, Activision, LucasArts, Blizzard comes, Creative Artists Agency comes, um, CAA comes every demo day, they look at the joint games, and of the six joint games that were shown in May, they're in discussion with three of the teams. And I'm going to show you some video clips of those games and tell you a little bit about what they're talking about with those teams. Disney, we get it from all parts, interactive, media, online, uh, pretty much every, Disney, uh, uh, Imagineering. Nokia Research Labs in LA and Hollywood, which is closing, unfortunately. Ballet Technologies, looking for people to build gambling games. Insomniac Games in Santa Monica. Sony Online and Computer Entertainment in Santa Monica. Applied Minds, Naughty Dog, Seven Studios, Zero G, Happening Games, Intrinsic. Cred.fm, Zynga. Um, two years ago, Zynga hired 20 of my students. Last year, they hired 30 of my students. They keep hiring people and growing really, really fast. We have a master's degree. It's, it's um, 33 units. It's, the general CS degree is 27 units, and it causes somewhat of a problem. Um, we have a core computer science. You've got to take analysis of algorithms. You've got to take a graduate class in computer graphics. You can then choose one of the following courses, like advanced operating systems, AI, advanced AI, web technologies, software engineering, database systems, computer systems architecture. You take a game development core, which is the game design workshop, the game engine development class, and the game hardware architectures class. If you were undergraduate with us, you've already taken that class and that class. You then have to choose a concentration area, which might be infrastructure, cognition and games, immersion, or serious games. And infrastructure, there are classes like um, computer animation and simulation, parallel programming, network games, uh, design implementation. I teach, an, I teach that class. Uh, Activision Central Technology takes one student out of that class every year and hires them to, to build as part of their infrastructure. Um, networks AI, uh, how do you build AI systems that can work inside of networked games? Um, advanced mobile devices. The mobile devices class, uh, we have 50 students in that class and usually a waiting list of 40. And so this, this semester we're actually operating two sections of that uh, and that happens every semester. This is, a, this is probably one of the biggest hiring areas that we have. Um, cognition and games, you can do, a, USC has a big strength in AI at the graduate level. So there's classes in networked AI, affective computing, game-based learning, AI planning, multi-agent systems, advanced AI, uh, immersion, uh, a lot of courses like computer vision, uh, speech recognition, virtual reality, and stereoscopic animation, and serious games, if you're interested in that. And students in the masters, they spend their last year building game projects in that same 491 class um, that we had with interactive media. Internship and placement, we basically are able to put students in all kinds of companies. This is a list of pretty much everybody in games that is in and around LA. And since founding the program at USC, I've been tracking where did our students go? And what games are they part of? And how many players, how many copies have been sold? Or how many players are there? So you can see Activision, um, they've had students on Spider-Man 3, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 3, which is not yet out, Black Ops, 
Call of Duty Black Ops, probably about 45 million players. So our students who are participating in, build, in graduates are building games that are reaching at, at that level. Crystal Dynamics, uh, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider games, Electronic Arts, all across the map. It, it says 23.97 million. Um, I actually couldn't get the numbers for Scrabble, Simpsons, Madden, and Tetris Mobile. These are really up in the millions, all right? So these, these are, this is probably adds another five to 10 million that I haven't listed there. Uh, Kabam, Kingdoms of Camelot, 15 million players. Disney Ultimate Band, Cars 2, Club Penguin, uh, 12 million. Zynga, I have, I have graduates on all the Zynga games. There's like 233 million players from Zynga. This is huge. Uh, 2K games, NBA, uh, 2K9, God of War 3, Gearbox, Duke Nukem Forever, uh, LucasArts, Blizzard. I have a couple of students on Diablo 3. Um, the senior producer uh, of, of, of that is, um, one of, is the guy who used to work for me, Alex Mayberry. Uh, Riot Games, League of Legends, Insomniac Games. So this is kind of where I, I don't, I, I went to look for Microsoft Game Studios. Uh, we have a number of students who are there, but Microsoft has only quite recently started hiring from our program. And uh, so those students haven't yet shipped a game. So they're not listed yet. They will be eventually. Uh, basically, people say, what's your plan at USC? My, I said, my plan is to take over the game industry from the bottom. Uh, so you always have to have a goal in life. My goal used to be to be a professor and live no more than five minutes from the beach. But uh, I've changed a little bit. So I'm going to play uh, some video clips of games right now. And uh, let me pop out of this and bring up QuickTime Player and uh, put on the games. And I'll, I'll pause them and talk over them. Okay. These are games shown at our demo day in May of um, this year. Uh, can we cut the lights on the stage? Navigator, turn around. Thanks. First mate, target, check the beacon. Engines at minor, forward thrust. Navigator, turn down. Pitching ship down. Navigator, attack orbit at attack range. Entry aggressive orbit around target. Target designated. Navigator, attack orbit at attack range. Capsizing. Navigator, attack orbit. Fire, attack orbit. So I'm going to share a speech recognition that it's a great idea for a game, but this is a very interesting demo work, right? Next time on Quicksilver. When one of the heroes falls ill to a deadly poison, the others must brave a bandit's hideout to find the cure. Meanwhile, back on the train, can the captain trust a mysterious stowaway? Or next time on Quicksilver, the hero's vacation plans are interrupted by a demon attack. Could this relaxing resort hide a sinister secret? Or next time on Quicksilver, when Nepenta is captured the by the rival of the town, her friends only must the find a destroyer when they have a demon. Infinite destinations. Infinite intrigue. Infinite evil plots. Infinite shocking twists. Infinite adventure. Quicksilver, infinite story. Their journey, your story. I'm going to pause just a second there. This is the, the, the team that built this game. And what you'll see is programmers. I think there's, what, nine or ten there. And artists and animators. Quite a huge group. Um, showed this game a demo day. Creative Artists Agency went up to the lead guy on this, Teddy Diefenbach, and said, we love this. We want to talk to you about this game and your next game. All right? He's quite happy. He showed his next game a demo day. When I look in the mirror every morning, I see the guy I saw the day before, but I don't know. I never thought to keep track. So how long have I been here? I've known construction all my life, but I never worked with time travel. Before I took this job, it changes you. Name's Cotton Trouble. 
and I'm the director of operations for this fine little facility. Allow me to welcome you to the Grand Canyon Dam. As you probably know, we use time travel to relive the same workday over and over, which allows us to maximize productivity. There are only 15 million people in the Southwest whose lives are riding on the successful completion of this dam. And we've got less than a week to get it up and running. Be aware that when you change something in the past, it will affect things in the future. I can't believe I'm doing this. I've implemented an accelerated schedule for the entire site. We're creating our own freshwater inland sea here, for God's sake. You can't rush something like this. I love this game. Again, a very big team.
I'll pause that just for a second. Um, their industry advisor was one of the got head, got head producers at EA Mobile, and he got them full use for uh, royalty with no royalties of their music library for this game. Uh, they've signed a deal with a company, Creative Mobile Labs, through Creative Artists Agency. Uh, there are uh, two stars that uh, are represented by CA that are vying for this to be their game. So one of those stars has 32 million fans on uh, Facebook, and the other one has, I think, about 10 million. So it may actually come out in both versions. But the students have signed a deal where I think they're going to make several million dollars in royalties from this deal, which is... Awesome, right? So you could pay off all your tuition for USC and on graduation. I'll just show, I think, uh, one more, two, two more. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful tomato princess who lived happily with her fellow fruit. However, on the other side of the market, the veggies grew envious. I think that's the last one I want to show. Uh, just mention that that game uh, is a free game, and it is up on the iTunes store right now. It's, it's doing amazingly well. We should put the lights back on the stage so people can see me. And uh, that this is built by one programmer, one artist, one musician, and we showed this at Demo Day, and one of the mobile game companies that was in the audience went and, and grabbed the team and hired them all to build games, which is a, a totally, it's a totally smart thing. You know, here's a, here's a group that built a 42-level mobile game uh, and uh, shipped it before they graduated. And uh, the company said, well, they could probably do it again. Why not take a chance? So this tells you a little bit about our program. I'll put my email address up there, our website. You can see all the video clips and download all our DVDs. And I'll take questions at this point. from the audience? No questions. I'll, I'll ask the first one. Can you uh, explain from, uh, I mean, you've been in the gaming industry for uh, decades now, um, but can you, can you tell a little bit about how the uh, social network industry has changed this field? I mean, uh, this is obvious with companies like Zynga, but sure. uh, and even how it impacts your program. Oh, you, you, yeah, it, it impacts the program. So uh, social networking is huge. And, and in fact, one thing I didn't mention is we are in discussion with Zynga to create a social networking class for next semester. And in fact, the Zynga is going to send us back one of our students who's been at Zynga for two years to come and teach on Friday mornings. He's going to fly down from San Francisco to help teach the class and then fly back to Zynga on Sunday nights. Um, very big deal. It, basically, social networking, you know, when you say, I really like this game, and you put it on Facebook, uh, you, all of your friends download it, and all of their friends' friends download it. This is a big, huge deal, which and in a way it means you can almost give games away for free and, 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 and target advertising from inside the, from, from in and around the games. It's a big deal. It's not a trend that's going to go away. Right. Other uh, questions? Um, yes, here. So thank you. Very impressive, pro impressive program. And oh, do you thanks. think this is the future of uh, computer science education that where highly specialized programs emerge and you start seeing programs uh, for building games and programs for maybe uh, building web applications specifically sure. instead of more fun. Well, it ha it, this, uh, this program has a lot to do with me because uh, you know I used to teach the introduction to computer graphics class. And what I always had students do is I'd say, let's do something fun, like let's build a game or a, a simulation system or something. And th this program is kind of like an outgrowth of that. And so I started in computer, in computer graphics in 1973, a long time ago, and I taught myself to program. I taught myself computer, um, uh, computer graphics, uh, and I, I shared an office with a couple of interesting people as an undergrad. 
Uh, I shared an office with a guy named Bill Atkinson, who was like the number 11th employee of Apple Computer and designed McPaint and HyperCard, and another guy named Bud Tribble, who's like today the vice president of software for Apple Computer and is kind of in charge of like iOS and Mac OS X. And so at, when we're 18 and 19 years old, our whole goal in life was computing was fun. And so I'm, I'm, what I've been building in this program is to make computing fun. So with respect to computer science, games are the best expression of computing that I know of because it has computer graphics, it's got software, it's got networking, it's got AI, and it also has some things that are outside of computer science, which is design and art and sound, and it just, to me, it's, it's, it's bigger than computer science. It's kind of what, what it means is my students are amazingly passionate. They come, uh, they're very excited, they, they want to build a game, they've got a great idea for it, they want to work in teams. When they graduate, they know how to build games in teams, they know how to program uh, from, I, I met with my dean two weeks ago and he goes, Your, he says, my program has the highest average SAT scores of the incoming freshmen that come into the engineering school. All right, so you think about it, the games program is going to be the weaker guys, it's the stronger guys are coming to that program. So I think Berkeley could do a program like this just as well. In fact, they may have one I don't know about. Santa Cruz has. So I, I know Santa Cruz's program, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 every year I lived in Monterey, I would drive up and give a talk at Santa Cruz. When I designed the USC program, I put a, I had a public website, which is all the syllabi and the design of the program. And when uh, Jim Whitehead said he was designing his program for Santa Cruz, he found my website, copied most of my ideas, and cut a couple of classes out. He cut operating systems out, and networking out, and to make it, I think, uh, a little bit easier. But you know, they have they have 300 students in their first semester, their first semester ever, so uh, they're doing real well there. The main the main thing is I'm, they're kind of out of the way, and far from where most of the game industry visits. All right. So uh, my question is, um, sure. since you know, you've made a point that your students are very passionate and involved and very knowledgeable about many things, um, what, what movement has been made on games for social impact uh, in your program? Um, so so they're, they're, you know, we have a serious games class, and people can choose to build a game for social impact if they want there. But most of the students have not chosen that. I think the closest thing we got uh, to social impact is we had money uh, from Humana, a health insurance company, Humana Innovation Center, to build games for fitness and health. So we ran a semester-long class on designing games for fitness and health, and in the next semester, uh, we designed three games in that class, and the next semester we actually built the games. And we submitted them to Michelle Obama's uh, contest. Uh, and in fact, we won the best game in Michelle Obama's contest in the White House, and we also won the best overall. It was a game called Trainer. So we do that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's, it's not a huge part because most of the joint games that you see are entertainment focused, all right? Yeah? Anybody go into educational uh, software? There, there are people very interested in the educational game things, but I, I always, you know, let me tell you what I think about educational games is people need to spend way more money than they have been on educational games. So here, here, here's, the, here's the metric that I use. If you look at the Los Angeles Unified School System, 180 days of school in a year, and you spend 45 minutes every day in math and 45 minutes every day in science, on 90 minutes a day for the entire school year, that's about 270 hours. And so if you look at World of Warcraft, if, if kids in the first six months of playing World of Warcraft 1, uh, World of Warcraft uh, would spend 288 hours in six months and be totally in, immersed. So, when I, and it cost $110 million to build that. So I'm saying, yeah, you want to do one year of math and science education, $110 million to get the whole thing, just based on any sort of information theory arguments. So it costs a lot of money, and if we invest in it, we can do all of K through 12 for uh, $1.3 billion, all right? We can do it, we just haven't. Carlo. When you created that new curriculum, which was so thick that nobody would read it and they just unanimously approved it, how many of your existing colleagues at the time did actually buy in by teaching some of these classes and actually sticking to the curriculum? Because what you're finding here, we can write the curriculum and then you know, your colleague walks up to it and teaches a class he thinks is the way the class should be taught. Ah, <laughs> this is a good question. How do, you, how do you make faculty do the right thing? You hope, you know, so 
this is an interesting question. So almost all the classes in the games program are taught by people I selected and not by anybody in the tenure track program. If, if the class has become a class taught by a tenure track person, it's because that's, that's what they wanted to do, all right? And so, yeah, you ask a very good question. You can, you can lead a faculty to do the right thing, but you can't necessarily make, get them to do the right thing. I understand that. Other questions? Do we have uh, any other question? Okay, well, thank you so much again for the wonderful talk. And thank you so much for coming. Sure. Maybe, maybe uh, the first five minutes.